Are you fed up with compression? Are you convinced that it's not for you? Even though compression is an essential tool of audio engineering, there are some situations where it can be used sparingly or avoided altogether. So in this video, you'll learn three reasons to avoid using compression and what tool you can use instead. This video is brought to you by DistroKid. DistroKid makes music distribution fun with unlimited uploads and artists keep 100% of their earnings and royalties. Over a million artists rely on DistroKid to get their music onto Apple Music, Spotify, and all other online streaming platforms. And now DistroKid services are easier than ever to access with their new iOS app. With the DistroKid app, you can upload new releases, edit release metadata, and share your hyperfollow links. The DistroKid app is available on iOS, so you can go to the App Store to download it. And if you haven't already, you can use the link in the description to get 7% off your first year's subscription with DistroKid. So in the last video, we talked about how compression is an essential tool in audio engineering. It offers several benefits to increase the impact and overall listenability of a recording, if that's what you're going for. But in this video, I'm going to discuss three reasons that you might choose not to use compression. Starting with reason number one, preserving natural dynamics. Some musical genres may prioritize maintaining the natural dynamics of a performance. If you want the listener to experience the full range of dynamics, avoiding compression can have its benefits. By adjusting the dynamics only when necessary, you can retain as much of the live feel as possible. This approach is favored in genres like classical or jazz that rely on live ensembling. By using minimal compression or clip gain as an alternative, you can help to retain the natural dynamics and liveliness of a recording. The dynamic fluctuations and interplay between musicians can create a sense of live authenticity that may be better preserved without heavy compression. This live feel is desirable in certain recording scenarios, such as live performances, which aim to capture the natural energy of a band playing together. So in our first example, we will manually adjust the problem areas of a vocal with clip gain instead of using a compressor. Look for any loud spikes in volume, as well as breaths, sibilance, or harsh consonants, which can be attenuated with clip gain. Here we're going to isolate and attenuate these areas manually instead of relying on a compressor to catch these areas automatically. Because we know the compressor is going to react to the loudest spikes, I mean, you can go and turn those down yourself. And we know that by adding makeup gain in the end, we're just turning up all the mouth sounds and the unwanted bits of noise. So by going in and clip gaining all of these down manually, you're going to get a much cleaner performance, even if you choose to end up compressing later on. Another thing I find is that vocalists may trail off a lyric as they run out of air. So you can boost the end of the phrase with clip gain to prevent losing the vocalist in the mix. This clip gain trick also works great on delicate instruments like acoustic bass in jazz, where compression may also affect the tone of the instrument. This way you can preserve the natural tone and dynamics as much as possible using clip gain. And the second reason to avoid compression is to maintain dynamic contrast. A lot of music can benefit from contrast between different sections or instruments. Now granted, this is kind of an arrangement thing, but compression can really mess it up if it gets overused. If you want to maintain a stark contrast between soft and loud passages within a mix, using less compression or employing it selectively can be a great way to preserve the impact and excitement of those dynamic shifts. To learn more about using contrast in mixing, check out this video. So in our second example, we're going to be looking at the verse and chorus of this song Patience by Lexine that is coming out in September. In the verse, we've got a lot of percussion layers that are all uncompressed for a natural feel. And when the chorus comes in, we have a drum kit that is compressed and punchy.
Notice the impact of the drums due to the dynamic difference. Now the chorus hits so hard because of how the dynamics shift up from the verse. If I had compressed everything in the verse to match the chorus level, it wouldn't have had the same impact. So by using compression selectively, you're able to enhance the dynamics of your overall mix. But maybe you want to be more specific of how you're affecting the dynamics of a track. Sometimes a compressor is too broad a stroke, and you may require a tool with more nuance in your dynamic control. Which is the third reason not to use compression. There's a better tool for the job. Here are three tools that you may consider as an alternative to standard compression. The first is a de-esser. While both a de-esser and a compressor affect the dynamics of a sound, they operate differently. With a de-esser, you can cut vocal sibilance in the high frequencies. A de-esser is specifically designed to address excessive sibilance in vocal recordings by targeting a range of high frequencies, usually around 2 to 10 kilohertz. You can choose the range you want to target, set a threshold, and the amount of gain reduction. But don't go too hard or it'll make you sound like you have a lisp like Daffy Duck. But she can't always see what's staring you in the face Are you ready to lose the things you can't replace? But she can't always see what's staring you in the face are you ready to lose the things you can't replace? This tool is designed to target a range of high frequencies, whereas a compressor usually affects the entire range of frequencies in an audio signal. Unless, of course, you're talking about multiband compression, which is tool number two. Multiband compression is different from normal compression in that it divides the audio signal into multiple frequency bands, each of which can be compressed independently. In this second example, we're going to be working with some boomy bass and we're going to be using dynamic EQ, which is quite similar to multiband compression, except that it doesn't have control over attack and release. So with our dynamic EQ, we're going to select a band around 150 hertz, which is the part that gets a little bit boomy on my earbuds when I'm listening to this mix. I'm going to set the threshold to duck this band during the loudest notes. This way we're only compressing that problem area when it becomes most prominent. alternative to compression that we're going to talk about is the transient designer. A transient designer specifically targets the transient portion of a sound, which is that initial sharp attack, the sharp ascent of a waveform. Now, a transient designer allows you to shape and manipulate the transients while leaving the sustain and overall level of a sound relatively unchanged. So a compressor, on the other hand, is more universal. It's going to affect both the transient and the sustain portions, which can take some careful adjustment. But with a transient designer, you've got two knobs to adjust the attack and the sustain of your sound. So in our third example here, we're going to talk about using a transient designer to affect the length and punch of a kick or a snare. Need more punch for your snare drum? Simply turn up the attack on your transient designer. Need a shorter sustain for your kick drum? Simply turn down the sustain so that the length of your kick is shortened. And if you want to learn more, here's a whole video on using transient designers and mixing.
So I hope these examples give you some ideas to work with. Leave a like if this video helped you out, and remember that these reasons should be considered in context. Ultimately, the artistic intent and the specifics of a recording should guide your decisions on what tool is needed to get the results that you desire. There are many great uses for compression, and you can learn three reasons that compression is commonly used by watching part one of this video. Thanks for watching and happy mixing. Maybe it's time I walk away. Can't save you from myself, anyways.